All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Low Light Levels Blue mod, which is being made by user RJVB09. And what this glorious little piece of fork looks to add into the game is two lovely new stars with a number of planets and moons, of course, orbiting around them for you to explore. And who doesn't love a new planet pack, especially one that adds in new solar systems. So let's uh, jump into the tracking station and have a look at what we do get. Now while I zoom out to the new extent of our known universe, I should of course mention this being a planet pack is going to require Copernicus for it to properly function, which does mean you may have to downgrade your game to version 1.8.1 of a Kerbal Space Program, but with all that sorted, you get the new Wilco, all the way over here, and oh my, it is a long way away from our main system. And if we head on over to Wilco, we also have our other star in this, Rubo, orbiting around it. But let's continue on to Wilco, which is most certainly the primary body of this entire mod, because, well, I mean, look at it. Wilco is a neutron star, extraordinarily dense, with a radius of only one kilometer, but a gravity of 225,598,806,273 Gs. That is a whole lot of Gs, and it does have its own atmosphere, but definitely one you don't want to go and try and explore, because again, all the G's, but look at this thing. It is magnificent. It is just absolutely gorgeous. I love the spiraling disc here. It's uh, emissions there. It is just so very cool. And yeah, by far my favorite part about this entire mod, I could just spend so, so much time in missions just coming to explore this. Now, it's not just Wilco, though, in this little system, it has two planets orbiting around it, uh, the first of which is Raya, which is a lot smaller, well, actually a lot larger, 310 kilometers, but with a lot less gravity of only 0 0.31 Gs to its name, but does have an atmosphere, and this is one you do want to go explore, because, well, it's a planetary body rather than just a neutron star of death. But as you can see here, it's a pretty good looking planet. Not a whole lot of light, but I mean, the whole name of the mod is Low Light Level Blue, so that should be really expected. Bring some headlights for your landers. But yeah, it's a very cool looking planet. I love sort of the, uh, I guess, more dirt area back here, uh, or maybe that's land and the rest is just ice covering everything with the one giant crater here. A very, very cool little world. Now after that, we also have the planet of Ken, which is actually more of a captured asteroid. It's 12 kilometers in size with a gravity of a 0 0.0059 Gs, has no atmosphere to speak of, and uh, is, as you can see here, really, 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 really far away from the beauty that is Wilco. It is just a tiny, tiny little rock out in the middle of nowhere, but it does have some cool features. Overall, it's just a lumpy rock, but I do like this little canyon back here. It may be hard for you guys to see on YouTube because, well, it is hard to see in general. Again, really low light levels. Now with that, that takes us to our next system with the star of Rubo, which is 600 kilometers in size with a gravity of only 19,691 Gs and does have an atmosphere, but even despite the lack of billions of Gs, it's still not one you're gonna want to go visit. Now this is just, uh, as you can see here, just a big, really white, bright, blue ball, and it does seem to be a lot brighter than uh, Wilco. As you can see here, we actually do get like, some proper sun flaring off of this one. Uh, it's still pretty, pretty low light levels on the rest of the planets in this little system here. Which the first of the planets, as you can see, there are a lot more orbiting this one than Wilco. We've got a lot of fun little orbits here, especially for that particular planet, which of course we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but the first of the planets is going to be Loth 
which is 400 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.77 g's and does have an atmosphere to help you explore. It's kind of a Mars Duna-like planet, as you can see here, with all the reddish soil and, of course, all the... Actually, no, I think that's lava. Is that supposed to be lava? Hold on a moment. I have completely forgotten which one was which. Had an oceanic past. There we go. Uh, but most of its water mass has blown away. So, yes, yes, that is that is land. I'm suddenly forgetting which planets have what things. Money is a very cool terrestrial planet for you to go and explore. Lots of fun little mountain ranges and deserts, etc. A cool one. Now, the next planet that we do have is the planet of Ufgo. Now, this one is a lot larger at 1,100 kilometers in a radius with a gravity of 1.834 Gs. This one, too, does have an atmosphere. And as you can see, it's a pretty nice little planet. A lot of variety in both coloring of the texture as well as the smoothness of terrain. You can see uh, the bulk of the planet seems fairly smooth. But then up here in what I would, I guess we could call the northern hemisphere of this one, it has a lot more rocky of mountain ranges, seemingly a large glacier up there. It's it's quite cool. A nice little uh, canyon going up over there. Another one over here. A lot of good variety to this place, which I do very much enjoy. And all in all, just another fun planet. Now, next one we do have is Giza, which is a just beautiful blue gas giant, which is 5,000 kilometers in radius with a gravity, surprisingly, of only 0.3 Gs, but does have an atmosphere being a gas giant, just like with the stars, not one you want to go and explore. And as you can see here, it is a just beautiful blue ball out there and does have its own little moon. And that, of course, is the moon of Mikri, or Mikri, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that, but it's 195 kilometers in a radius with a gravity of 0.16 Gs with no atmosphere on this one. Most of the planets in this mod do seem to have an atmosphere. This is one of the few that does not. And as you can see here, a pretty typical moon, just all terrestrial, pot-marked with all sorts of craters. Just a nice a standard a little thing. Few interesting features, but all in all, fairly standard as far as moons go. Next, we have the moon, or rather the planet, with the interesting and irregular orbit of Croth, which is 190 kilometers in size with a gravity of 0.15 Gs and another one with no atmosphere to speak of. And it's another very terrestrial moon-looking thing. In fact, it's texturing and modeling. I'm not entirely sure, but it's nearly identical to McCry. I don't know if that's a meant to be that or if that's a glitch or I'm just not seeing some sort of thing that is obviously different but they are quite similar both in their looks but also their stats the uh, McCry is only five kilometers bigger in its radius and with only 0 0.01 G's difference between the two so they are very very similar now after this one we go to the planet another gas giant of Zek, which is very Jupiter-esque, and it is 3,000 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.7 Gs, and of course an atmosphere, but well, again, with any gas giant, not one you really want to go and see, but it is a beautiful world. I really do like this gas giant a lot more than uh, the previous one of Zek. Zek is still cool, but this one just has a lot more well, a lot more color, frankly, and it is pretty nice. And of course, has some lovely moons for you to go and explore. The first of which is Thessy, which is 300 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.27 Gs and does have an atmosphere for you to enjoy it with. And as you can see here, a pretty nice little planet. Overall, fairly smooth with some noticeable mountain ranges and some, uh, it's just interesting. Uh, why am I suddenly forgetting the word I'm looking for here? Uh, basins! Basins the word. There it is. As well as your pretty typical uh, crater impacts. All in all, a fun a little moon with a good view of its gas giant there. And the last one we have is technically two moons in one. And that is... 
P PC and Poco. I don't know if that's how you pronounce those, but they are two asteroids that appear to be orbiting each other while they orbit around the larger Zek. Now, each of them is identical in their stats of 19 kilometers in radius, a gravity of 0.007 Gs with no atmosphere. But yeah, as you can see here, they are orbiting each other. Now, technically, we're right now looking at the PC or Piki Poco. I really don't know how to pronounce this one. The berry center that they're actually orbiting with how this all works. And then you tab between the two of them here. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, yeah two little asteroids orbiting each other, orbiting around a gas giant, which is orbiting around a white dwarf, I think uh, this one is supposed to be, Rubo. And then those are, of course, orbiting around the beautiful neutron star that is Wilco. And I love it. It's just a weird little nesting egg of orbits that is just gorgeous. And all in all, a cool little pack for you to have fun with. And I've actually been wanting to look at this one for a while, but when it was released originally for 1.73, I had some issues with running it. But when it got updated to 1.8.1, it has been working flawlessly. And I very much do enjoy this one with both some interesting views as well as some interesting orbits. And again, if, oh god, I gotta go back to, well, you know, we're just gonna go to low light levels blue ship because I mean we have to end staring at the beauty and magnificence that is Wilco here before this ship apparently dies from you know heat because I'm really really close good times well yes that is gonna be it for this mod though a beautiful pack with some great things and one of the most gorgeous views right here I have seen in this game. So if you'd like to take a look at it for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this episode. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next, when hopefully we'll be looking at another wonderful mod. But until that time, uh, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.